Hello, everyone, and welcome to HSQL demo session. My name is Mahdi Kashani, and I'm a software engineer at LexisNexis Risk, and I will be co-presenting with Atria Bain, a brilliant intern from RVCE College of Engineering in India. In the first part of this demo, we will introduce the HSQL language, why it is needed in our today's tech industry, the latest and greatest features available for customer use, and then we will present on how to install and start with the HSQL language, select command as one of the basic statements, visualization library that is used with HSQL, the modularity features in this language, and how to train and use machine learning models with it. SQL was first developed in 1974, and since then, it has been very popular between database developers, especially when it comes to working with relational databases. As a reference, if we look at 2020 Stack Overflow survey on most used databases, we will see that the top, top four choices are SQL based. Given its extensive usage by developers, we decided to develop HSQL that stands for HPCC Systems Supported SQL. It is designed mostly for SQL developers that are interested to develop an HPCC Systems platform. With HSQL, developers can easily adopt to HPCC Systems platform and start working with big data right away. Currently, SQL is being supported by HPCC systems in two ways. First is our SQL embed structure, which developer, developers can write SQL code directly in ECL. While the pro of this feature is the capability of coding in SQL, the con is that developers need to know some ECL and how to wrap the SQL embed with ECL. Second support system is WS SQL, which is a service that provides a SQL interface into HPCC systems. This web service accepts a subset of prepared and standard SQL queries, while it gives you access to HPCC systems data. One of the drawbacks of this feature is all your SQL queries are submitted via SOAP call. And users have limited options when it comes to data analytics and machine learning. HSQL essentially aims to be a seamless interface for data science developers to use. And it helps you to explore the data in the HPCC system data lake. HSQL is a great language since it can support data visualization and machine learning algorithms for our data analysts as well. HSQL translates to ECL and it is beneficial to new users because they don't need to worry about learning ECL or integrating other tools such as visualization tools with it. And speaking of where HSQL fits into the whole idea of HPC systems, HSQL is essentially designed to complement ECL and is more intended towards simple data ingestion, exploration, and simple machine learning algorithms and applications. So talking about what we have added to HSQL, we have added a new intermediate stage to separate syntax checking and code generation into two separate phases. This is very helpful when it comes to IDE support and fast syntax checking. Also, from the language side, we have added functions which help you write reusable code and modules which give your code and organize the structure. There are other statements in this language which have had new features added to them to make them easier and better to use. For example, the writer statement and create layout statement have been introduced and the select statement has had new causes added to it 
to make HSQL easier and better to use. Now, please let me to invite Atria to demo HSQL. Atria, the floor is yours. Thank you for the great introduction, Nadi. Hi, I am Atreya, and today I'll be showing off some of the things that you can do with HSQL. So here I'm showing you a window from VS Code. It's a great ID, and I already have a HSQL file open, get cnt.hsql. So it's currently showing a simple import from a module and a select query. You can see some of the samples already present in the source directory. And the ETC directory has the data set that we're going to be working with. That is USA underscore cars.csv, which is a simple data set of cars and the HSQL extension. Now to get started with HSQL, you can actually just right click on the extension and that opens up a context menu. And from there we can just click on install and it's ready to go. You can already see that the extension is working as we can see some syntax highlighting available to us. After installing the extension, we can see that the extension also performs syntax checking and shows any kind of errors or warnings that might be there in the program. The extension is currently seeing that there are no actions that are there in the current program. And that's because we have removed the select statement that was there before. So we can currently fix this error here by adding our first query, which is a simple select query. And you can see that with the help of the autocomplete options available from VS Code, I can quickly write out the statement. So this is a simple query that will give us the count of the number of rows that are there in our cars data set. Once the code has been written out, the extension can also be used to convert your HSQL code into ECL for execution. We can open up the command palette on VS Code by pressing Control Shift P. And from there, we can just search for compiler HSQL program and press enter. And you can now see that on the left, the ECL code has been created, get cnt.ecl. If you're not using VS Code or you prefer other workflows, there is also a CLI tool available for use known as HSQLT, which you can use for syntax checking and translation. So here in this example, I have deliberately added an invalid statement, the fourth line, and we can see that the tool here will report any of these errors or warnings that might happen from compiling your program. So additionally, once your code is ready, the CLI tool can also be used to submit your HSQL programs to a cluster after translation. This uses the ECL client tools in the background, so you're required to install those as well. But here I remove the output statement that was invalid. And from the output, we can see that the data set that we have will contain 2,499 elements with the help of this simple query. So now that we have HSQL set up, we can talk about some of the language features behind HSQL. So we had seen the select statement right now, and the select statement is the most important part of HSQL. So its purpose is to be able to process and work with tables similar to SQL. So here at the top, you can see the first two select statements I've written out, essentially show some basic information on the data set that we're using, similar to how we would in SQL. The first one here shows the first five entries of the data set that we have using the limit clause. And the second one shows the average price of the cars that we have in our data set using the average aggregation. The third statement at the end performs a simple filter, which is which gets stored in a definition and can later be reused. Now we can either print it out as an output or we can also, as we do here, we can write the table to a logical file for later reuse. So once you run this for execution, we get two outputs. The first one showing the five um, such cars as we had from the first query. And we also get an average price for the cars in our data set. HSQL can also be used to perform simple as well as complex filters using the where clause. And another new feature is the distribute by. It can help you manage your data skew by distributing the data across nodes in your cluster, according to particular columns that you have chosen. 
So here we're picking out the two most expensive cars in the next step that are from 2019 and clean with the help of the order buy and the limit clause. So we can also have aggregations and here we have given some examples. The first example is an aggregation that has been combined with a group buy. This yields us a buy year count of the cars that are present in our data set. We can print it out and also give it a nice title with the help of the output statement. Additionally, we can also run a simple aggregation where we can get the price of the most expensive car in 2012 in this data set. Now, moving on to joins, we can take a look at another feature, which is the fact that HSQL is intended to work seamlessly with ECL. So above, we have an ECL program marks.ecl, where we have created and exported two small tables. So on the left, the first table subs is a mapping between a subject ID and a name, which is the subject name. And on the other table, we have a set of marks that have been scored in tests by a person in these subjects here. So we can work with this exported data from ECL by simply importing it using the import statement. And now to see the average marks per subject, we can use a select statement, do a group by and an aggregation, which gets us the subject ID and the average marks scored in each subject by that person. Now, to get a better readable output, we can perform a join, specifically an inner join, and between the subject table and the marks table. And this will give us a nice output that shows us the subject name and the average marks that have been scored in that subject by that person. Visualizations are another important part of HSQL. So viewing tables are great, but being able to see the plots and charts to make it a lot more easier to work with and understand the data. So previously we had made a table that represents the by year count of the cars that we had in our data set. And now we can also visualize this table as a column chart using the plot statement. Interestingly, what we see is a lot of these cars are from 2019, but we see that some of them are as far back as from 1973 as well. So currently we support most of the standard plotting methods from the visualizer bundle. And on the right is another example of a visualization, a per state count of the cars in this data set presented as a bubble plot. We see that a lot of the cars in this data set are from Pennsylvania and Florida. Now going ahead, we can also talk about a few of the new features in HSQL that have been introduced. Functions, similar to other programming languages, help us in writing reusable code. In this example that I've shown here, cars by brand per state, gives us a per brand count of the cars in a given state. Now, this is done by using two simple select statements that do the filtering and aggregation, followed by returning the result. Now, this function can be called by simply passing the appropriate arguments, which are the data set here and the respective state, and we can get back some nice results. Here we are calling it for Georgia and Virginia, and we see that in Virginia, according to the data set, there are a lot of cars from Ford, GMC, and Dodge. And in this data set, there are a lot of cars from Ford, Chevrolet, and Dodge, which belong to Georgia. Another feature is modules, which can help us structure our code better. So here we are wrapping a record layout and a data set that we use from a logical file and wrap them into a module. Now, using this module is very simple and we can use the standard dot notation to access all its exported members. So as an example, we have a simple output query here that takes out the first two rows of the data set from the module and then prints it out. And when we execute this, we can see the first two rows of the data set as output. We can also export definitions from our file, which allow us to use it in other ECL and HSQL programs. So this program here specifically exports the record layout and the data set used in all the other files for the cars data set, which we've been using so far. 
we can finally also move to machine learning, which is another really important part of HSQL. The idea here is to be able to easily create and use simple machine learning models. This is done by the train and predict statement. For this example, we will take a simple house pricing data set where we can filter out the independent and dependent variables using the select statement. From here, we can pick out some entries for making a training set and create a simple module using the train statement. Here specifically, we are just printing out the model, but that's not the main point of creating a model. Instead, we can pick up elements which weren't there in the training set, and we can use it for running predictions against the model. Using the model we created before, we can predict the price expected for the independent variable supplied using the predict statement. So when we run this program, we see two outputs. On the left is the real value, and on the right is the predicted value by the model. So the idea behind these two statements of train and predict is to help wrap up the statements that are usually required for machine learning into simple and easy to use statements. So in summary, HSQL should help you to analyze and work with data, use and create simple machine learning models, and finally also to create visualizations that can help you understand and work with your data better. Thank you very much for your time. To check out our product, you can visit our HSQL GitHub repository. And also we are very open to feedback and for further information and inquiries, you can contact us over email.